Okay, everybody, we're about ready to begin. Um, let's go ahead and start the uh, PowerPoint. It's very short. I make them always short because I like to get right into the functions of DSS. Uh, today is going to be how to view and understand the log file from the DSS v6, where to download, download the logs, how to view the logs, what's in the logs, and what logs are most important that we view as engineers. Today is the 26th of October, 2010. And I'm Todd Maxwell with Open E-Technical Sales, and along with me is Tom Simon. I want to let you know that all the webinars are recorded and they are stored on our website for you to view them. So you will find the demos and the recorded webinars at the link below, which is www.open-e.com slash library and slash webcast and demos. There is a plethora of videos there, so please watch them as as I always update them, as well as Giannis. Presentation is muted. This is to avoid background noise, so a lot of times I'm not going to be able to hear you, and this helps others to listen to me clearly. Questions are always welcome, as many of you know who I am, and I would love for you all to use the chat window, which is on the right side of the net viewer, and you'll see a little tab there. It says chat on the corner. Please use it, and I'll pause for breaks during some time periods. So that way, if there's any questions come in, I'll ask them answer them with your uh, questions. Webinars are planned for usually every week we have them, so they're always being updated. So always uh, pay attention to the CR schedules. They're updated on our list on our website. And I think that's about it for our PowerPoint. And let's get right into the whole about the log files. So give me a second here as we close this out. Let's pull up a DSS v6 server, and what I want to show you is that the first things when you get into DSS v6, obviously you want to make sure, I always recommend this, is what version are you on? Try to keep up to date with some of our new releases that are always scheduled to be released. We have another one coming out next month. Uh, this one that came out this month is uh, build 4786 that you see right here. And you can always view the, the release notes. Uh, if you go into the maintenance and into software update or on our website, and here you can view, if you click on the down arrow notes for that version of all the release information that we have for new, updated, and fixed. Okay, how do I get the logs? Well, very simply, you go to status, hardware, and you want to go all the way down to where it states logs. Many times uh, customers or end users will use the log viewer, and this is not providing the whole logs. These are only providing some of the logs. So one, like for example, if you want to look at critical error logs, you can. But in this session, what we're learning is how to understand the whole log file. So right here is where you want to click on the download button. And during this process, what's happening is, because when we go and look at the logs, you're going to find there's hundreds and hundreds of files. And it can get confusing. So it does take time. So what I'm going to show you is you know, how to get the logs, then how to view the logs, and then what files are most important that we look at uh, as engineers. <clears throat> there's all kinds of things, as you well know, the DS is, is packed with features of NAS, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, there's backup, there's snapshots, there's replications, uh, there's timing issues, there's authentications, there's file protocols. So here, the logs store all the information, including all the buttons that you push or any actions you make. So give it time to compile all the files together, and then here you'll be able to open up the file or save the file for later review. And this is typical when you have an issue and you need technical support from OpenE, we do require you to download the logs and send them to us because they're very helpful. Um, so I already have the logs pulled up, so we don't need to save that. And here, I'm going to make sure that you are able to view it. This is what you're seeing. So let's take a look at it. At first, you're, uh, and by the way, a lot of times people ask, what do I use to view the logs? Uh, I, I preference with uh, WinRAR. WinRAR is a better viewing system uh, for me. I like to organize it. I like to keep the dates modified so I see current dates. Uh, when I look at the main logs here at the root, so here you see like critical errors, and you want to see the date. 
So you want to reference it to the dates, and that helps you keep your eyes. So these are the most active logs when we download them for these dates. If you go all the way down, you can see there's older dates. So they, they have a little re relevance to me because they're packaged from the older source codes. So let's go back and let's take a look at what we're seeing. So at first glance, you're going to start seeing these directories, LVM, DRBD, and so forth. And what do they mean? And I'm going to go over those. Then you have compressed previous historical, typically the file GZ, the LSI logs, if you have an LSI array controller, uh, or threeware. D message logs, this is information when the hardware boots up, it gets all the information from the system. User activity logs, these are the actions that uh, were performed by a user. Uh, so if you wanted to find out what actions took place, there's some historical records of what was done. Then after that, you get into the individual root logs of all the logs, and the ones that we're going to focus on we'll go over with. So what is it that we're looking at here on these directories? LVM stands for Logical Volume Manager. If we look at the Logical Volume Manager, there's information in the LVM com file. So a lot of this you'll, well, what does this reference to mean? Well, what you want to do is we're verifying information of your uh, volumes. So, and also that we keep historical records. If in the event that you had a system crash, uh, having the logs is very valuable to us because we might be able to perform the restore of a volume if it was lost due to because of a RAID array issue or whatnot. So this gives us information about how to restore and how to build back. So these, this information is so valuable to our engineers to help you. Typically, we don't go really into the logical volume so much, but we do go into DRBD. So what is DRBD? This is where we do our volume replication. So here you're able to uh, review um, the files, that uh, the configuration files that help you understand the configuration. Let's see, I got some people that said not seeing a black box and a mouse pointer. Um, let me know, are you able to see the screen now? Okay. <clears throat> So without any interruption, let's go hold off on all the questions uh, when I get done in a break, and this will help the flow of the video as well. Um, let's try to open up new files and see if you're able to open them see them. So here we're going to look at the DRBD log. And now I see what you're saying in the black box. So let's try to do this. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, so here, let's go back into the DRBD, which is related to volume replication. If we were to look at the volume replication, this gives us information of the logical volume that I'm replicating. And it gives also the metadata information as well. And then when you uh, want to get into a deeper spec, so you can look at, is this the primary server? A lot of times we have customers that send us two logs due to, because they want to be able to help them troubleshoot what actually happened. So a lot of times what happens is they're not named. So we're, they're named primary or destination. So we have to find out information is, what is the system? What is the logs that you are providing us? Are they primary? So it is helpful if you can name the log file primary and secondary or primary destination or source and destination. Uh, otherwise, we have to dig out the information. But as you see here, we're looking at the IP address of the remote server. So this helps us get some information about what's actually configured, if it is properly configured, uh, if you're using any WAN configuration and so forth. So that's what the DRBD stands for. The Etsy information provides us a little bit more information about the Samba, the uh, FTP, and, and Apache, and so forth. Um, typically, we only go in here uh, just to review the Samba connections um, and information with Samba. But we have a lot to cover, so there's going to be a, more questions and interest in some of the other areas. Failover is with the auto failover. And here you can look at the configurations. So you would be able to get information of the remote IP address, the secondary node, um, the keep alive and deadweight time values. So that's with the 
uh, failover, and of course Fiverr channel in all the groups that you created. Then you have the iSCSI. So the iSCSI directory provides information about the targets you've created. So if I were to right click on this and view this file, I see my SCSI ID. What mode if you're using right back or right through? So this helps us especially to determine if you have some performance issues, possibly we could tell that you're not using the right back functionality. Bear in mind you want to use the right through when you're using auto failover or really any volume replication. Um, and then of course we're able to get into a little bit deeper functionality in the settings of your max burst lengths to see if they're properly set or if the max exit or transmit data length are different. Sometimes we see different values people are entering due to because they're testing but they fail and they go into production and they never revert back to them. Um, and then we're seeing issues. So this is where this helps us to review your iSCSI target settings. Also if you have any other types of configurations, uh, maybe you have um, if you're not using if you're using SCST or if you're using IET which is the iSCSI Enterprise Target Solution. Uh, SCST is our version of the target solution that is default with DSSV6. Also this helps us if you have any allow and denies for your IP addresses for your targets. So in the SCSI, uh, iSCSI directory there's a lot of information just for all your targets. And of course Samba is with your ADS log. So here I have an ADS server that I logged into. If I view this file it tells me my uh, ADS server is oe.local. Uh, if you look down here, it finally authenticates. It tells me the date. And it looks like my offset time is, is pretty significant. So I would have to troubleshoot why is my offset time different. Because when you go to an ADS server, you want to be within five minutes. So this gives us information that uh, I was successful on logging in, but there were some problems at the time offset. Uh, in here, if we let's go back to the next one. So let's, we wanted to find out that time. Let's look where the time's at. So we're going to shift a little bit here. We're going to go to the www directory. And here, if I want to verify the customer's time, maybe he's not authenticating properly, or maybe it's not time drifted, uh, or he's not able to authenticate with the ADS server. We we'll go to the hardware setup, and here I see clock settings. Well, I'm currently residing in EST time, which is Eastern Standard Time. Here I could tell that, obviously, if this was my system. I purposely did this to show you all. That here I would tell the customer, please set proper time settings. So this is where uh, there's information about the clock time, and, and we'll get into that a little bit. So Samba provides information. Include is very limited on uh, basically FTP and resources very minor that you'll ever have to go in there. The shares have to deal with the NAS. So here you would see all the NAS shares. I create a share called data. Now if I look at data, I could see that this is providing me information about the volume. I have Sambas and SIF enabled because the one means it's active. NFS is on, FTP is on, AFP is on, and my rsync for my data replication agent is on. So below you'll see that the SAMA configurations and hair permissions and so the parameters and properties are associated with these. So this tells me, okay, maybe the customer puts synchronous lock and asynchronous in -sync, insecure locks and he enabled them, but he's having difficulties authenticating with, let's say, a Solera system. Or he may have changed the user in group squatch. So this would help us identify, dear sir, go ahead and please make these changes and then retest again. Uh, and so that's part of viewing the data uh, for uh, the shares, that seeing that all the shares and making sure that the appropriate file protocols uh, are assigned to the share. Uh, 